In this section, we're going to be looking at invariants. And what I mean by that are either invariant points or a line of invariant points or an invariant line. So there are a few different situations that we need to consider. So remember, what you're thinking about and what you're imagining is that graph uh, transformations are being represented as matrices. So these matrices are being applied to these coordinates. And what are happening is that they could be uh, rotations, they could be reflections, they could be enlargements or stretches or shears. Okay? So we've looked at a number of different situations. Or they could be a combination of those. Now, if a point remains fixed, so once you have applied the transformation and it has remained in place exactly where it began, we refer to it as an invariant point. Okay? So we have a possibility of an invariant point. Now, there is one point in particular that will remain invariant for all uh, transformations that can be represented as matrices, okay? And that is the origin. Because if you have a matrix A, B, C, D, and you apply that to the coordinates 0, 0, you will get 0, 0, okay? So it doesn't matter what A, B, C, or D are, you will get that the origin maps to itself. So the origin is an invariant point. Now, I also mentioned that you could have a line of invariant points. Okay, so what that means is that you have a line, well, points that are on a line, that once the uh, transformation is applied, remain fixed. So you could, ex you could imagine that these are all points along the x-axis, for example. After a reflection in the x-axis, these points will remain precisely where they are. Okay? And so this would be a line of invariant points. Okay? And of course, there are the points in between as well, not discounting those, okay? So all of these points would make up this line of invariant points, okay? So quite often you can think of those as um, reflection lines. So the mirror lines themselves, uh, all the points along those lines will remain fixed. Then the last situation is an invariant line. Now, this is different to a line of invariant points um, because an invariant line just says that points that started on the line remain on the line. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they remain fixed. Okay, so we're not just talking about a line of invariant points here. Okay, so for example, this could be your x-axis, and you have points that are on the x-axis which are mapped along it. Okay, so that could be a stretch parallel to the x-axis, um, or in the x-direction, uh, by factor 2, say, for example. So the points that are on the line remain on the line, okay, but they're not a line of invariant points because the points aren't standing still, okay? They're not staying still. They are moving along the line, okay? And so there is this distinction uh, between those two situations, okay? So you can kind of think of this, uh, this situation as a mirror line, whereas this you might think as a stretch in a certain direction. Now, that's not just meaning that those two transformations are the only ones that will create a line of invariant points and invariant line, but it gives you something to kind of connect it to.